it's on now. Thanks, Todd. They met in Paris in 94. Or was it 95? She was there studying abroad. He was on tour, playing in another dive. They parted hard and they parted ways. A little north of the sand. you guys that was my fault entirely I'm in my studio and I was I was working on some music before the show and uh, forgot to reset all my A to D converters so
Um, yeah, um, that one. That one was written on guitar. I meant to do that second. I screwed up. Um, that one was written on guitar, and I, actually, it was written in a car driving. I was in Ohio actually, and I was driving to. Uh, I think I was drive. Uh, I was in. I was on my way to Detroit, and um, and um, and I was uh, I was on this tour by myself. I was opening for Robin Hitchcock, who I love and who I learned a lot from. And um, and anyway, I was on tour with him, but I was by myself and I was in my car driving. And it sounds romantic, and I think a lot of singer-songwriters want to do that. Like, oh, just get in my car and just play wherever. But um, playing wherever is a tough, it's a tough job, you know, um, especially when you don't get paid all that much to do it, right? So you trudge, and you've got a team of people telling you the whole time, like, you know, it's okay, it's, you just gotta, you gotta cycle through the Midwest again, and but the fourth time through, you're gonna have like a big crowd. But, um, uh, you know, it, it never really happened that way for me. Like, for me, it was more like I'd get on these cool tours and then I'd, I'd just exhaust all my resources on stage and, um, and at the label, you know, just like get, keeping my band out on the road and stuff. It's just so hard out there, but not in a way that's like tar on a highway hard, but more like, you know, it's just hard on the soul. Um, so Unexpected Traffic was was written somewhere between like Ohio and Detroit. I can't remember what city I was in in Ohio, but anyway, um, and yeah, and it was literally, I was just like, I was in the middle of nowhere and it was like dead, dead traffic. And it, for me, it was a perfect metaphor for my career. I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm stuck. And then these clouds come over and it was this beautiful painting that just appeared. And it's the lyrics, I wrote the whole thing in, in the car this is before cell phones. Well, before um, actually, I didn't have a cell phone on that tour, but it was before iPhones. So I had, to, I had my little portable recorder, and I recorded that song. I digress.
again. So that one was sort of the focus track. That was the focus track of the record. Focus track meaning, you know, oh, well, let me tell you a little bit about this record. I'll take a, those are my three songs of the week, people. That's it. I'm, I'm out. No, but those are my three songs from Hang On My Proper. Because as you know, I'm going to be playing all the songs from this record throughout the course of February. And um, talking about each song, playing them different, like Unexpected Traffic was different. I know I'm preaching to the, some of the converted, but for, you, for some of the, you that are new to this, or you know, you have heard of me and, and now tuning in for the first time, um, I'm a big Thin Lizzy fan. This is my studio. Um, well, this is the front of my studio. All my gear is over there. But um, um, anyway, yeah, and I've been doing this thing, and I'm really having a great time doing it. So, three first three songs from Hang On Mike. Um, I mean, there's stories in each one. I don't want to spend too much time on them, but I know that you guys like the that the stories that go with these songs. Uh, with "Nice to Know You," there, that that sort of arrived as like this big hook, you know, and it was just a hook, and it didn't have verses. So this, and I know there's a version on uh, the LP bonus tracks that um, some of you probably have. If not, go to ilvmv.com, and everything's there for free. But um. Uh, if you want it on vinyl, I do have copies on vinyl. So go to MikeBiola.com and go to the store. I have vinyl. And they're really, it's a really, it's the best pressing I, I've ever done. And that's thanks to uh, my friend Peter Block, who put up the money for it. It was on his label for a short time. Okay, I digress again. But anyway, back to, nice to know you arrived to me as like this big hook, you know. Wow, this is really cool. And I know it's very Fleetwood Mac. It's very like dance with me. It's all that, which I love. And it, you know, this was 2000, you know, two or something like that when I wrote that song. And nobody was. It was all the Strokes, and it was the Yeah Yeah Yeahs in New York City. And uh, it, it was my now friend Ryan Adams who was doing rock, Americana kind of rock, and I, I was doing like making like you know records that were frozen in time, like 1974. Um, so when songs like that arrived to me, like "Nice to Know You," I um, I seized upon it, and I was like, I kept, I tried to keep it really simple. But when I cut the record, when I recorded the record, and I played it for my manager, and I played it for my label, everyone said that song sounds unfinished. You should write verses because it didn't have verses; it was just a chorus. And I was like, No, I don't want to do that. And I don't know why I didn't want to do it, but for all the like complaining, not complaining, for all the unhappiness I had being, being like, with, sort of like, with a, I, I kind of like, I really pros, I prosper more as an artist when I'm just, leave me alone, and let me do my thing. Um, when I had a team trying to kind of put me out into the world and make me bigger than this room, uh, it frustrated me. And I, I realized, I, I realize now, after all these years, like, I just, I wasn't into it. Like, I didn't want that. You know, I, I didn't want it. I see people that want that, and they have this thing where they, you can tell they want it, and they'll just do what it needs to happen. I was really stubborn. I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that, you know? And, um, and that actually points to this story, you know, of the whole, like, inception of Hang On Mike. What happened was I had made Play With Your Head, and we had made a video for You Belong To Me Now. And that video, you know, uh, Moby loved that song and played it on MTV, and, and, it was a really good video, and the single got picked up here and there, but nothing amazing. I just got really bummed, because I'm like, that's the best I can do. That, for me, is a really good pop song, like this vernacular single. I can't do it any better right now. So I pretty much told my manager, um, who is my best friend, too. He's, he's still a good friend. And I just said, look, I can't do this. i, I got to stop. Can you get me out of all my deals? I just want to stop. And he's like, just give me one more record. I have the resources. You can do whatever you want. Just give me one more record. There's no need to quit now. And I was like, well, I'm not quitting. I'm stopping. I think there's a difference. I'm not sure exactly what. But anyway, um, so I, I just hold up in my in my apartment in New York, and I just decided I'm just going to write a bunch of songs that I want to hear. You know, like, here is an example. I'm going to try and play this song, but I'm trying to connect covers to this record. And... Um, this is Paul Simon song it goes like right there is sort of the DNA of the unexpected traffic like cluster right so mm -hmm. 
You got the cool water when the fever runs high. You got the look of love light in your eyes, and I was in crazy motion till you calmed me down. Something goes right, oh, it's likely to lose me. And it's apt to confuse me, cause it's such an unusual sight. Oh, well, I guess I can't get used to something so right, something so right. got a wall in China, it's a thousand miles long, to keep out the foreigners, they made it strong, and I got a wall around me, that you can't even see, it took a little time. Such an unusual sight. Oh, well, I guess I can't get goose to something so right. Something so right. Some people never say those words, I love you. It's not their style. I'm listening to that stuff, and there's a lot of like alternative. I don't know. It wasn't called in all. I guess they called it indie by that point. But there's all this rock music happening, which I love. Rock. It's, I come from rock. I come from a kid in the basement with a Les Paul and a loud drum set, and you know, and in classic rock. That's where I come from. But I really gravitated towards this very chordy lyric-based music that wasn't popular and still isn't really, but. Then, you know, people were doing some stuff at the living room in New York, like um, Nora Jones and um, Jesse, his name's escaping me right now, Jesse, I want to say Jesse Mallon, but he's in Degeneration. Um, but I think he, the guy that wrote that song, that big, huge song of, of Nora's, so stuff was happening. I wasn't, just wasn't part of that scene, because uh, I, the, the, I was in a rock band, and when you're in a rock band, it's like you're in a gang. You don't hang out with people, you just hang out with your band. Um, at least that's what the candy butchers did. <clears throat> so, or, or, you know, in bands they like, gangs they like. 
Um, okay. Uh, what else did I want to tell you about? Uh, oh, I know. There's a, there's a, so, you know, I'm into that song, Something So Right. And I'm like, I want to do something like this. And of course, like, people running the record companies, they're older, you know? They're older than me. Well, they were at the time, right? Now they're probably younger than me. But at the time, they were older than me. And um, so they loved the idea. Oh, yeah, let's let Viola do that. And so my manager was like, just do whatever you want to do. Everyone's behind this idea. So, you know, they they really liked me over at Columbia. They did at Columbia when I was there. And anyway, so they hey, let them do it. And so I started to, like, really dig into, like, super personal ideas, like something so right, like... Super personal song, and I never really went there before. My music always had, it always had like metaphors, you know, so um, that I would just hide behind or hide behind stories. I'd never be first person, right? So uh, there's this song is all about just being first person and name checking friends and stuff like that. And this is a, this is a song that is one of my favorite. It didn't make the record because um, I don't know why, but I really don't know why. But it was my decision. But I really like this song. Let's see if I can remember. Hold on. Oh yeah. Shit. Hold on. Oh yeah. one of those shh stories. Okay. Um, I really like that song. I call it The Best of Bish because <clears throat> I love Stephen Bishop. Oh, here's a Stephen Bishop song. You've 
You've heard me play this before, but. Down in Jamaica, they got lots of pretty women. Steal your money and then break your heart. Long too soon, she's in love with old Sam. Taking from the fire to the frying pan. What can you say about that song? One of the best songs ever written, I think. I love that song. So I wasn't, you know, I don't de I wasn't deconstructing these old songs and like rewriting them. I know that that's definitely a way to write. I've written songs like that before. Like, oh, you know, it's a good way to start a song actually if you're stuck. It's like, well, let's try and write all my loving. Which I know all of you are gonna be watching that thing this Sunday, the 50th anniversary, at eight eight o'clock on TV. I'm excited. Um, the Beatles at the Ed Sullivan Theater. I guess they changed the marquee um, from David Letterman back to the Ed Sullivan Theater, which is really cool. I think you can, if you're in New York, I think you can go there now and see that. Um, and this is my this is my Yamaha Porta Sound. This is what this thing is. I love this thing. I use it all the time. Um, I've been writing a record with somebody, his name's Andrew McMahon, he was, he was in a band called Something Corporate, and he was in a band called Jack's Mannequin, and we're doing his record here, um, and we, we wrote a lot of songs on this thing, in this world or two, but whatever. Uh, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and play this song. Um, I had... Alright, let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. <laughs>
said it before it's the matrix of my whole love of music is that song I know sorry it's got because it's got everything in it even mystery and doubt um, okay I'm just looking at some things I was gonna play like maybe so I, oh, oh I wanted to say I finished my recordings so this is what I printed up this on paper just to show you but that's gonna be the CD cover you know Whatever, you know, it's a one-of-a-kind thing. Uh, <clears throat> I get better paper. But um, the recordings sound really good. I, I spent a lot of time on it, and I finally got it dialed in, like how I'm going to do it. So it's not going to be as hard next week, uh, next, this month for Hang On Mike. But, you know, it's so much fun. And, I'll be, and there's one bonus track on there, too. Actually, um, I'll play it now.
Lurch or Lurch bonus track anyway, and I'll kind of end with that. I'm going to do this next Friday. Here's a little announcement. I think I'm able to do this every Friday at this time. I know it's not the best time for everybody, but it's good for me, and uh, I'm going to be doing that. So hope to see you next week at 12 o'clock. When that's definite, I'll send out an email so you all know. You can't live your life alone. You've got to find somebody. Very Beatly song. That was in honor of the Beatles' 50th anniversary of coming to America. I'll be hanging out in the uh, in the feed, in the chat feed, right after the show, and uh, talking to you guys. If anyone has any questions or I don't know, wants to complain about the production value, the lighting's too harsh, and can you put on a shirt? You know, I don't know. You might have some complaints, or you might just want to say, "Hey, man, it was cool." I don't know. But I'll be there in the chat room. And uh, again, the top tipper of the whole month, last month, was Gordon Weiss. And he won the Falling Into Place. I'm calling it Falling Into Place January 2014. That's the name of the record. And he won that. And I have to say, it's pretty cool. Re Reimagined versions of, of Falling Into Place. I don't know how to get, but I'm bleeding like the Stanton called me, though. He's my bro from Mommy, Ohio. Call me. Thank you, Todd, for saving the show. Once again, you've saved the show. And uh, six seconds. 